Wake that ass up early in the morning. The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ MV Angela Yee, Charlemagne the God. We are the Breakfast Club. We got a special guest in the building. Steve. Steve Wilkos. Welcome. <laughs> Thank you. We missed you last time. I think you're supposed to come last time. It was a snowstorm. A snowstorm. Yeah. 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 So it would have took us about five hours to get down there. So we passed. Uh. So, so what is it now? Season 134 of this new <laughs> show? We just finished season 12 yesterday. We had wow. a rap party last night, mm-hmm. and I'm only able to be here this morning because I don't drink anymore. So. <laughs> Oh, wow. No more drinking at all, huh? No, not after that DUI, DUI man. That, yeah. uh, that put a kibosh on you stopped that. stopped drinking it and, and totally. Totally. Totally, yeah, 100%. That, what, what's, what's the status of that case? Is it, it's hard to get thrown so, out. Uh, so, yeah, so like anybody, if you're a first-time offender, um, you I had to go to 10 uh, court-mandated classes. I had to do uh, Mothers Against Drunk Driving. Um, I had, you know, the breathalyzer on my car for six months. And uh, so my court date now is just my lawyer showing up. I completed everything, and it, it it's totally uh, thrown out, expunged, whatever. Insurance it, it, must be super duper high now. Goodness. Well, gracious. let's not talk about that because they haven't caught on to it. So. All right. <laughs> Damn, baby. But at least nobody got injured, and that's, that's the main... you know what. Listen, I I mean I make light of it now because you know uh, I mean it happened. I made a terrible, terrible mistake, and I I make no excuses. But you're right. Like it could be a lot worse. Mm-hmm. I could have ran somebody over. Uh, could have gotten into an accident. Thank God. I, I didn't even really hurt myself. Um, you crashed but, into a few uh, poles. Uh, yeah, and car. three telephone poles and my car. If you saw my car, you can Google it. Um, it's amazing that you know I'm here. So the wildest headline. It said I saw a headline that said uh, Steve Wilkos admits the line about car crash. Like who tells the truth? In For, those first situations? of all. <laughs> first, <laughs> First of all, who did I lie to? They say I lied to TMZ. And yeah. I'm like, when when is it the law that you have to tell TMZ anything? Like, yeah. First of all, somebody gave out my phone number, which, how did that happen, right? Somebody gave TMZ my phone TMZ number. TMZ got everybody's number. Uh, Harvey called me the next morning. Well, I I did have uh, some brain injury. I had bleeding on a brain. and, Ooh, and oh, wow. So he called me the next morning. I don't even remember talking to the guy. So what I said to him, I have no recollection. Um, but then he was like, "Oh, well, you lied to me." And I'm like, "Well, who? Who? Can I swear?" Okay. Yeah. yeah. Who the fuck are you? <laughs> like, and I've been nice with Harvey. I've been cool. Yeah. Like our shows launched at the same time. But I'm like, it's like Steve Wilco's lied. I'm like, okay, I went to court and I pled right. guilty in front of a judge. Yeah, yeah. So I didn't lie to anybody, right? So you know, he's so. not your judge and jury. Exactly. So it's interesting to go from covering all these stories that are in the headlines and then now to have to be a headline yourself. I'm yeah, sure that's it's difficult. embarrassing. And, you know, because uh, I've never been in trouble in my life, you know, other than being a kid. Um, you know, and I, I, I do a show where I try to be a role model and, you know, people look up to me. And to have that kind of letdown, was it's it was tough, you right. know, and, and for my kids to be exposed to that, uh, that's the worst part of it. Were you going through anything that night or it was just a recreational decision? No, uh, no. In fact, I knew, you know, I'm 55 now, so that was a couple a couple years ago. I, not that, like, I'm not an alcoholic. I'm not any of those things. I never done, never done a drug in my life. Um, but I knew alcohol was becoming an issue in my life, mm-hmm. you know, just drinking too much. Uh, you know, never drank before shows or anything like that. Then I, but on the weekends, man, I just drink it too much, and I, I just gave it up. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, that day, my kids were gone. My wife went to work, and it was like the championship day where the two AFC NFC games, and I was gonna have a card game at my house, and I bought uh, alcohol for my friends to come over. Game fell apart. I was home alone, and I made a terrible decision to start drinking that day. I didn't drink in over a year, and I, I got really messed up and, and and truthfully i wish i could tell you where i was going where i was coming from i have no idea i was that yeah. drunk yeah yeah, yeah that's yeah. crazy yeah. it said that you you said also that you were dealing with bouts of depression at times well i i i have been uh for probably like the last 10 years uh really bad crippling depression like when i first moved out here 10 years ago you know the move from chicago to uh, stanford the pressure of the show uh, at that time i only had one year left on my deal you know you worry about a million things uh, so I mean I I weigh 250 now. Well then I I dropped under 200, which wow. looked like I had cancer, and I've been battling it on and off. But the good thing is, since I've stopped drinking, no more depression. Wow, Ooh, see that's, that's, that's interesting. So people yeah. have to be aware of what they put in their body because yeah. a lot of times that does affect. Your I, I've health. never since I've gone through this. And listen, man, if I could go back in time, I would never do it again. 
but I made a mistake, and you know, mm-hmm. and uh, this is life. Like if if you can't move past your mistakes, you know, I, I regret it. But like you said, thank God I didn't hurt anybody else. I can deal with the fact that I just screwed myself up. Right. But the truth of it is, I struggled with sleep, uh, pressure, dealing with the show, and everything these nature. And I probably dealt with a lot of it with alcohol. Well, now that I gave up alcohol, I've never been happier in my life. Uh, I, I, I sleep great. Mm-hmm. Uh, so a lot of these things that caused me uh, problems, it really cleared up since I stopped drinking. Any therapy? I did uh, see a therapist for a while. I yeah. went talked about things. And, you know, like some a lot of issues were getting to me on the show. Like we deal with a lot of child molestation. Right. And uh, really hard cases. Yesterday we did a show about... Uh, this little kid that, you know, the, the father broke the, the two-month-old baby's ribs and Ooh. the baby ended up dying. That's and it's so just, hard you know, to have to... Yeah, so we get lot. heavy at times. And, and and so it's like everybody's talking to me and they want their problem solved. And I, like, I didn't even realize it. Well, you I don't got to nobody talk, to talk right, to. Right, like, you know, yeah. like everybody, like who who's mm-hmm. going to help me, man? I always you know? say that. Who does the go-to person go right. to? So, yeah, so... Some good cam of it because then I realized, hey man, I, I need to talk to someone. Yeah, I was too. thinking that there's a lot of issues that come up on your show that I'm sure you have to think about after the show as yeah. a human being. You try to, you try to turn it off, um, but it's hard. Just like when I was a policeman, I really never really took the job home. But there was times you do, like you see such horrific stuff right. or you hear and it plays in your brain and it does take a toll on you. you I know? saw the case of Alexis Scott because that was a huge case. Yeah. And she's missing. She was missing. Right. And she actually, the family had to come on the show and one of the people that was a suspect. Yes. Uh, so we did that. We just taped that probably two or three months ago. And, you know, and, and with the good thing with the family, we're helping them. We ran on some PSAs. and But, you know, you do those type of stories. And, uh, and the worst part about it is, you know, I have this crazy thing that when I'm hearing these stories and then I think about like my own kids yep. and like oh my god if this happened to my and oh I but, hate that gives right. you anxiety like a mother right I, you I know it. and then it's like you got you got to say stop that because it's not happening it's not gonna you know because if you you think that way you you drive yourself crazy now, I do that on? all the time I call I call it parental paranoia like I see something on the news happen to somebody else's right. child and immediately start thinking about my own if kids. that happened to you absolutely right? and then how would life go on? Now, what's going on in Chicago? You are an officer in Chicago. Yeah. What's going on with the, with the Jesse Smollett case? When you see <laughs> that, Smollett. it just seems well, like they, Chicago. Well, they can all tell you. When this first went <laughs> down, I said, man, that case is bullshit, man. Because mm. it just makes no sense. But everybody's so outraged about what's happening now. But, but my thing is, he didn't kill anybody. Right. Yeah. He didn't rob anybody. Yeah. So my thing is, like, like what they're saying is, like, this is the way we handle a lot of cases, 5,700 okay. cases. And it's true. I know people are pissed off and everything, but like the guy, he's going to pay a price no matter what, Mm -hmm. you know? So like, you're not going to put the guy in jail. So do you really want to put this to a trial and waste any more time on this? I guess it's a high profile case for them. But but, right. He's high profile. If he was Joe Schmuckatelli. Right. This would have been. Nobody would care about this. And I don't care about it. I mean, like I said, this guy, when you're, like I said, my own situation, right? I have the, oh yeah, I had a DUI, but you know. It is what it is, and you're trying to move forward. He's going to have a hard time moving on from this because he's convicted in, you know, the court of opinion, right? right. Like, court of public, public opinion, public, yeah. Public opinion. And Rahm Emanuel, you know, people don't realize his brother is Ari Emanuel. Ari Emanuel. Biggest agent in Hollywood. Yeah. And I'm with that agency, so. Yo, <laughs> come on, imagine that dinner meeting. Rahm yeah. pissed off, and Ari's yeah. like, ah, oh, don't worry about it. But, yeah, I mean, I don't see a problem with what they did. Like, first of all, you know, he, the one thing they should have got him saying is, you got to apologize, right? Mm-hmm. And we're going to make this all go away. I have no problem with that. But he's um, saying he still didn't do anything. The charges were dropped. Uh, but see, know. the one thing you'll see, he's not, first of all, who's giving up 10 grand if you didn't do something? Absolutely. Absolutely. I ain't giving up 10 grand. And then you're doing community service. Well, you know you did something, we're right? Guilty, yeah. And and then the other thing is, is if, if this is true, like he was railroaded, the cops did this, wouldn't you sue? You'd be suing the city because everybody yeah. sues the city. And if it was true, wouldn't the brothers be in trouble because they attacked him? Because right, like, they're lying. being very they're quiet. Not get, uh, they're not getting arrested. Mm-hmm. And, you know, this is all going to go away. Part and of that, the KC. Right. But if this, was, if this he really got railroaded, he'd be suing the city because everybody else. Well, he ain't suing the city. Now, you were an officer, too, when I, uh, when the first R. Kelly tape came out. And, and you know he, what's crazy? Our old executive producer in Chicago... They brought R. Kelly in in the late 90s. They were talking about some deal about doing a show with them. And, like a TV you know, show? Yeah. Really? 
This was like 1997, 98. What, to catch a predator? <laughs> Shut up, man. Shut well, up. But, the, but, but what was crazy was here I was still on the police department when I was working on Springer, and all the guys that worked under me were all cops. And we're all like, what the hell is this dude doing here? And back then we knew he was a child predator. Right, it was a well-known thing. And I thing. was like, hey, man. And, and I was like, do we, like, uh, if anything goes down with this guy, like they do a show, I don't want nothing to do with it. Like, I'm not running security. I'm not doing anything. You know? How it's was just, he protected for so long, though? It's yeah. crazy, man. Yeah, because everybody knew, but he was just. Well, well, like... why, well, why was Michael Jackson protected? You know, I mean, I guess if you, I mean, truthfully, if you're rich, uh, very, you know, successful and people love you, I mean, you could do whatever you want, right? I think Michael was innocent, though. I mean, maybe, but uh, he's certainly guilty of having underage children sleeping in his bed. Yeah. At the very least. Who yeah. does that? Yeah. yeah. Whose parents allowed he, he always that too, said he would sleep on the floor. Time. But he always said he would sleep on the floor, though. That's the thing that people would fail First to of realize. all, we're grown men, right? Yeah. Are you going to have an 11 year old buddy that's not your son? No. <laughs> exactly. Who, who hangs out with and children? And then you know already that people are watching you for those things. So wouldn't you say, let me just stop doing these things? Well, right. After the first trial, you go through that, right? And you're found not guilty. Woo. Hallelujah, right? You, well, why let me you, chill out. Why would you ever right. go back to hanging out with kids after that, right? Like, I mean, I watched that Neverland series uh, with those two guys. I mean, they come across as very credible. But they lied before, though. But weren't they lying for him? Now, kids lie all the time, right? But they lied twice. He lied to his kids and lied again when he was 20-something. Right. Um, Or allegedly lied. You don't know. I mean, and that's the thing. It's like... But then the the, the the girl who took the stand against R. Kelly lied for him also. uh, Right, and... and I, listen, R. Kelly's still alive. So if he did a crime, you can you can punish this guy mm-hmm. if he committed a crime. Michael Jackson's dead. There's mm-hmm. no punishing this guy. So it's kind of beating like a dead horse, right? You think R. Kelly I mean, would get away this time? Because it seems like they're dropping the case and dropping the ball again. I think it's going to be hard to prove. Really? Yeah. They I got do. four witnesses and tapes? No, they did too before. And they but these tapes, that, right? he's saying they're ages. Like the girls, yeah. for, allegedly, they're, they're on the tape. And he can say I was role-playing, right? I mean, uh, but we we also re- fail to realize the first time he was on trial for child pornography. This time right. he's on trial for actual sexual assault. I mean, listen, I just I would fi- I if I was a buddy man, I'd say he's going to get off. Wow, wow. Yeah. Thanks. Now listen, let me ask you this: So we see the interview that Gil King did with R. Kelly. I didn't see it. Record but I heard, breaking. Uh, would you have had R. Kelly on the Steve Wilco oh, show? Damn right, him, Jesse, get them all on. <laughs> <laughs> Is there anybody that you would say I I would never talk to that person? Pro- probably not. Well, I mean, why? I mean, if it's that where you would say that about somebody, that's a ratings booster, right? Mm-hmm. You know. And then listen, man, my show, like any show, if you're in it for the ratings. I don't care what anybody says. So, you know, you get somebody like that, that would be a huge. First of all, nobody like that's gonna come on my show and take a lie detector test. There ain't no way in hell. I mean, now Jussie's he's dropped charges. Come on my show, take a lie detector test. Mm-hmm. Whether you set this up, he would never, never. How credible are lie detector tests? Because people always I say think, they know how to beat it. Well, put it this way: my son did a school project, science project, right? So he did on lie detector test, and he came in with my guy Dan Ribikoff, and he did the, you know, tests and stuff, and asked, and it was hundred percent. You know what I mean? So, like, would I ever take one? Hell no. I mean, I would never take one. Why? What are you hiding? Why would you hide? No, yeah, what are you hiding, it's not, it's not that I'm hiding anything, but, like, if it came where, like, you know, would you let anything in your life that's important to you fall into the hands of a lie detector test? To nah, not it? if it's not accurate. Right? That's you know? what I'm saying. Like, I'll say this. I did beat a lie detector test when I was younger. I had to take a lie detector test. And I lied on that thing. What were you what lying you about? I really don't want to get into that right now. We Harvey, have to know Harvey this. Harvey said you lied, Steve. <laughs> uh, <laughs> You're a habitual liar, Steve. <laughs> you said you lied, Steve. <laughs> After I had bleeding out of the brain, I just got this charge. I, 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 who knows what I said? But, yeah, so I took a lie detector test and I beat it. You know, and, and How'd you beat it? Because they tell you, like, if you breathe normally. When they, so I'll tell you this. I was a young guy. And I was working somewhere, and some something went down. Mm-hmm. I was not involved, but I knew what happened. Right. Okay. I knew what happened. So the company came in. They brought in a lie detector. So I came into work, and they're like, "Oh, you're taking a lie detector test." Well, immediately I crumbled. I'm like, "Oh my god!" Yeah. You know. <laughs> but like, so they called in like three or four other people before me, and then when it came to me, I was already calmed down. So then when I got in there, the guy goes, 
I had my high school jacket on the thing, and he goes, oh, you go to Lane Tech? I go, yeah. He goes, oh, I went there too. So right off the bat, the guy's putting me at ease, you know? And then I just went on. I lied like I didn't know. Basically, you lied to that nice I'd guy. Lied to, I lied <laughs> because I didn't want to be a rat. Right. No snitching. Ooh. Right. Okay. I didn't want to be a rat, and I just didn't. I really didn't even want to be involved. And some of the dudes that I would have to say about, they were scary guys, right? Got you, got you. And right. I didn't want nothing to do it's with like that. like a blue wall of silence but, thing? Right, well, I wasn't a cop. Wasn't I, was, a cop. I was in high school. Okay. I was, uh, I sh- cops don't take a lot of talk to talk. I, I Ooh, never was really? They've there. never had to do that? I, now, I was on the job for 12 years. I never. Wow. What do you think about snitches, too, with you being a cop? Because you just said that. Because I know a lot of cops feel like well, maybe you shouldn't snitch if you way, did the crime, too. Well, here's the thing, and I, I'll be honest. When I was a cop, like I saw stuff that was wrong. But I also didn't want In the wanna, police force. Right. right. And I, but... I mean, honestly, I didn't want to look over my shoulder my whole career either, right? Mm. You know, like you go on some crazy thing and then you end up with a bullet in you, you know? So I wasn't, you know, I I was, I, I could sit here and, and tell you honestly, I never did anything wrong as a cop. Uh, I never brutalized anybody. I never uh, took money or anything like that. But yeah, I saw funky stuff, mm-hmm. but I just kept my mouth shut. Mm-hmm. Does that he, bother you to this day, like, Man, that's kind of messed up that somebody ended up in this situation all because, and I know it was wrong, but I, I never did anything, anything where it put somebody behind bars or anything or restricted somebody's freedom, mm-hmm. N- nothing like that. Mm-hmm. But um, I don't have any regrets. I mm-hmm. did what I needed to do to get through that job. What happens when they seize people's like weed and oh my money God. and things like that? You know, like when that? I was a cop, <laughs> guys were what locking guys up for like marijuana, right? I'm like, I never did that, man. Like, I've never smoked a puff in my life. But I'm like, why are we locking guys up for marijuana? Like, I never got that. And locking guys up for a joint. And I and like the Jussie Small thing. I'm like, why are we wasting our time with this, man? Like, guys were locking up for a, a, a joint, you know? And now it's going to be legal anyway. So I was like, what a waste of time. Where does all that weed go, though? Like, if they seize drugs and all, do they just throw well, it away? Well, some or? guys kept it for themselves, you know, obviously. But... You know, you get like anything. If you inventory anything, um, it it goes into evidence, and I think they they burn it. You know, mm-hmm. just like guns. Like there was a big smeltering smelt place uh, in Chicago, and they would just smelt them down. You know. Damn. Now you were talking about uh, like you know not being able to sleep and stuff like that. Do you think that could have been because of your past uh, uh, life as a police officer and in the Marines? You think you had maybe had some PTSD well, so, or something? Yeah. So I was diagnosed with that. Um, but I also, so like when I went to the sleep specialist, cause I, man, I really had trouble, you mm-hmm. know, and if you don't get sleep, you become psychotic. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I went to the specialist and he said like, when I was a Marine, I had to pull night duty and all this crazy stuff. And you have periods of, um, isolation and, uh, away from your family. And, uh, but then when I was a cop, we, when I came on a job, it was rotating every 28 days. So you burn out. I forgot the sleep doctor told me you burn out some kind of sensor in you, you know, mm-hmm. where your sleep, your your nocturnal rhythms or whatever, and it, and then if you burn them out, like it's hard to ever get them back, you know. Wow. So, but with me, what I really noticed when I got my show, right, like when I went to work on the Jerry Springer show, I was to work as security, and I, you know, my dad was a Chicago policeman, and I was going to be like my dad. My dad was in the military, was a cop. He's retired now in Florida. And that was going to be my life. Well, I got thrust into, okay, we're giving you your own show. Mm-hmm. Well, I never wanted my own show. I never asked for my own show. Never thought about my own show. The pressure was unbelievable. Right. Yeah, sure. and, that, and that makes me wonder, like, did you deal with, you know, your past traumas before you started uh, embracing everybody probably, else's? You know what? I grew up in Chicago in the 60s and 70s. I grew up in a very... Mob times. Violent. Yeah. Like, I hung out with guys. All we did was fight and, you know... I saw a lot of shady stuff, you know, and this and that. I felt bad about things. And I guess I never dealt with it. Yeah, so you had the street, just the buried, Marines. Right, just please. buried a lot of stuff. Man. Mm-hmm. And uh, years and years of it just buried and then, you know, talking about it. And, and to be honest, I don't know how therapeutic it is. Some of the stuff I wish I could just leave in the past. Just forget, mm-hmm. right. Because then when you start talking about it, it kind of renews it. So it's only a matter of time before you snap. Yeah, it's really true. Yeah. No. Let's get him out of here, guys. All right, Steve, welcome. <laughs> <Wilco. laughs> <laughs> nah, we appreciate you for joining us. Yeah, uh, thanks for having me. And All congratulations, right. by the way, on your success for your show and for yourself. Absolutely. Yeah. Do you and Jerry talk about the success that you've had? 
Well, yeah, and he, you know, it's and it's great for Jerry because he gets paid off my show, yeah. you know, because he obviously I got spun off, he gets a piece of it, but uh, you know, it's it's crazy to for you know, it's like if you had a security guy out here, you know, and then all of a sudden he would have his own show. And he actually does he, have yeah. a security guy who has his own show. Well, yeah. well, there you go. It's happening. That's but, awesome. uh, yeah. but like, it's happening. You know, it's happening. It, it, it is a crazy story, yeah. right? Like, you know, I Lex went there to work one day. And, <laughs> How many people thought it wasn't going to work? How many people was like, oh, I never work it. Yeah. But the only person who probably believed in it was me and my wife. Yeah. Not even Jerry? I, you know what? At that time, <laughs> I don't even remember talking to Jerry about it. Like, that's how like it was a whirlwind. Like one day I was, you know, security guard pulling people's pants down, and next day Whoa. I know well, you got your own show, and and that time in my life was such a blur. You know what I mean? Like you promoting a show, I'm tra- like I get done tape and I was going on the streets of Chicago taping street segments, then getting on a plane and going to Knoxville, Tennessee to promote the show and. You know, so that time in my life, I don't have a lot of vivid memories because it was just Work. a whirlwind and a blur. And, Who do you, you know, remember talking to, Steve? And why were you pulling people's pants down? Because Springer Show, it was like being in high school, right? I mean, we'd do any... It was so much fun because there was no rules. You didn't come in. There was no script. You just did whatever. And, and I remember there was this big fat guy. He was standing on the edge of the stage. <laughs> and I went behind him, and I pulled his pants down. And he had no underwear on, man. Oh, my God. And, but he ended up suing. and <laughs> what? Ended up, Wow, you got Me Too? Yeah, <laughs> yeah too. basically. And, and, There's and a like, lot of things you can't, can't do, do now. now. That, like, yeah. my, the lawyers came in from New York, and oh I had to sign gosh. this, like, reprimand. And it was like When nuts. they asked you why you did it, what did you say? I said because it's the Springer show. That's what we do. I yeah, mean, right. was, you know, people got to sign a disclaimer. We don't know what might happen. And then I ran into the guy that I pulled his pants down. I ran him into Kansas City, and you he know, pulled his pants down again. <laughs> <laughs> he pulled your pants down again. Well, was that awkward? And then he pulled them back up and left my hotel room. Why did he have on underwear? <laughs> okay, right, Steve. Right, Steve. Now we know how you've been on for twelve years. <laughs> Why did he have on any underwear? That's weird. I mean, come on, man. I mean, that's the thing about the Springer Show. It's like, why why did anything happen? I mean, <laughs> I, mean I think back now, and I'm like, how the hell did we get away with that stuff, man? I mean, we had people defecate on themselves on stage. Oh, my God. One girl's tampon fell out or how ghosted or whatever. Happen? You know? You tell right. me. Like, the why, I don't know how your why tampon can she, fall out. Why didn't she have underwear on, right? Like, right. you know, come on. Unless it was so bloody, it slid out. All right. I feel like ever so often you question all of this, Steve. You're like, what the fuck is happening? I, I say all the time, when I think about, like, I was just saying out here, when I was on the Springer Show, and I, I end, eventually left the police department, so I was just working on the Springer Show. And me and my wife had a condo downtown Chicago on the Gold Coast. We lived within a mile of NBC Tower where we taped the show. The show was the biggest show in the world at one time. I mean, that was the funnest time of my life. Mm-hmm. I mean, and I didn't have pressure on me because it right. wasn't my show. Right. I was this goofball that was getting paid a lot of money to be a sidekick on the show. So I just had fun all the time, you know? Yeah. And it was it was the best time of my life. Yeah, you know? So you haven't had fun in 12 in. years is what you're saying. <laughs> it's not the same kind of fun. Right. Wow. You have responsibilities. Yeah. And I wouldn't even say it's fun. It's it's my job. It's work. Yeah. So you got an exit plan? He's good. No. I, I wish I did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I don't have one because, uh, I, 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 you know, I work two days a week. I finished taping yesterday. I don't go back until August. Okay, so what do you do during that time? Take a vacation and have fun. Well, my my son's a baseball player, so uh, he's on three different travel teams, and I'm going to be traveling all summer with him, watching him play. Uh, my daughter, you know, I have a 16 year old daughter. I have to keep, you know, you about to go to college soon. Yeah, we're doing that now. We're doing the I college did last tours. Week. Yeah, I did the college tour last week. Yeah, so um, what do you you want to go to? She wants to go to California. Oh, okay. Um, US, she wants to go to USC and UCLA. And it was funny. We were at USC. dinner right before My Christmas. My wants to go there, too. And the guy goes, well, you got to write a check for 250000 <laughs> other than the tuition. I said, no, nah, man, I'm not doing that. Can like, really say that to you? <laughs> I'm like, no, so you was man. about to be on the news with Uncle uh, right, Becky? But I, I'm like, no, man, I'm not writing that check. I'm like, <laughs> you know, so. Who was the guy? They asked you that plane out? It was a buddy of mine who was dealing with Singer. Yeah, but wow. Singer was so busy, you he couldn't got even caught take. Up. No, because I said I, know. I, I didn't even know what was going. On. I sang right there. You like, come on, that's ridiculous. You just, gotta just get in. Is, if you gotta pay, like, she probably shouldn't be there, right? Absolutely. Like, what's the point? You know? So I didn't, I didn't know they just straight up ask you for the money like that. Well, he was saying that this is the way it goes down. Right. 
If wow. you were I wow. wasn't really asked, but they were like, okay, if you want your daughter to get in USC, this is what you got to do. And some parents might have been like, okay, so put me in touch. Like, how can nah, I make sure? not me, man. I wonder if they only do that to celebrities, or is that how it's going down with everybody? They need to make sure it's people with no, money. No, it's people with money. I think yeah, it's people yeah. with money. It's people with money. It don't have to be a celebrity, yeah, though. Yeah, just anybody that has money. He's not a celebrity, and, but he's very wealthy. And so, so when you saw that whole scandal happen with all of them, you was like, I, that's what... Well, I told my buddy, I go, man, you almost got caught up. Yeah. Because his son is ready to go to college now. And he showed me, he goes... He sent me the thing. He goes, this is the guy I'm dealing with. And wow. it was Singer. Sheesh. But Singer was so busy, he couldn't even deal with my friend at the time. He was getting so much other money. Right. Damn. I mean, you know, so. He's turning down it's, checks. It's, it's you think crazy. Singer's a jerk for that? Is he what? A jerk for that. I don't know if he's a jerk. Yeah. Um. I mean, listen, man, money screws people up. and it if, And does. I mean, the guy's pulling in $25 million or whatever it is. I mean, I don't know how much he was keeping because I know he had to pay a lot of people off. But, you know, again, it's like going to, like, yeah, I feel bad for the kids that got passed over because some rich kid got mm-hmm. them. But, you know, if you're making $25 million a year or something, you're not killing anybody or selling drugs. I mean, probably pretty powerful attraction there. Yeah. Well, Steve, thank you for joining us. Steve Wilkos. Steve Wilkos. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning.